As NATO's eastern flank, you're on the front lines of our collective defense, and you know better than anyone what's at stake in this conflict, not just for Ukraine, but for the freedom of democracies throughout Europe and around the world. You know, when uh, that's what President Zelensky and I spoke about when I was in Kyiv two days ago. That was President Biden in Poland today. The New York Times quoted one Russian citizen today who does support Vladimir Putin's war, saying she doesn't understand why it has taken Putin so long to defeat Ukraine. Quote, I don't understand why it's become so drawn out. It's a pity. Everyone in their families already has at least some acquaintances who died. Our next guest is Nadia Tolokonikova, founding member of the Russian protest art collective Pussy Riot. Her new art installation at the Jeffrey Deitch Gallery in Los Angeles last month is called Putin's Ashes. Nadia was imprisoned for two years by Vladimir Putin for singing a protest song at a church in Moscow that is now popularly referred to as the Pussy Riot Church. Russia then passed a new law banning such protests, which has come to be known as the Pussy Riot Law. And now Russia is threatening Nadia with arrest and prosecution under the law that she, in effect, created with her last arrest. Her new crime, according to Russian authorities, was mounting the exhibit titled Putin's Ashes at that art gallery in Los Angeles. Joining us now, multimedia artist and activist Nadia Tolokonikova. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. I, first of all, wanted to get what your feeling was when you saw President Biden in Ukraine with President Zelensky. It was a really strong statement. I'm really happy that the United States and Europe support Ukraine, and I think they should double down on supporting them. And what has happened to you uh, I, I mean, I, we all knew there was press about your art installation in Los Angeles, uh, but it, it was inconceivable to me that Russia would take notice of it and that Putin would take notice of it uh, and draw more attention to it this way. Uh, you're beyond the reach, uh, their legal reach right now, presumably. Uh, are you concerned about uh, what they might try to do to you now? It was funny. I had mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, my job for quite a while, for the last 15 years of my activism, is to hurt Vladimir Putin as much as I humanly can. And my instrument of war is my art. So on the one hand, it's really positive. It means that Putin is actually hurt by Putin's ashes because... Uh, we know that he's incredibly superstitious, so he might actually be afraid. Um, as we said once in our 2012 action, that uh, prior to our arrest, Putin has pissed himself. On the one, uh, on the other hand, it's incredibly annoying for um, pussy riot activists and my relatives, who are still back home in Russia. They are being searched, detained. Um, their devices, phones, computers being um, being taken away by police. And it's not something that we cannot fix, but it's incredibly annoying. But my personal answer is to um, just increase my efforts, bring Putin's ashes to other institutional spaces. We are in conversations with a couple of museums in Europe. I really want to bring Putin's ashes to Berlin, to London, to bring it closer to Putin's home. And um, all of my comrades uh, agreeing with me, including those who were searched and de detained. Nobody wants to back down because unfortunately, Putin doesn't understand um, just a normal conversation. He understands only strength. And this is what we have to show him. A, a, a lot of us have been wondering what the Russian people know on a daily basis. Uh, for example, President Biden uh, directed some of his speech in Poland yesterday specifically to the Russian people. Uh, you are hoping, no doubt, that the Russian people know what you're doing and what your protests are. What do you, what do you know or what can we know about what information is available to the Russian people? 
Um, well, all information they want, because we don't really have firewall. The problem uh, lay, lays in a different um, in different uh, area. So here in the United States, you have people who listen to Tucker Carlson, right? So you have uh, Lawrence Donald available, but they choose to listen to Tucker. So <laughs> there, there is there, there is that problem, right? But um, in in Russia, it's um, it, it, it's around ninety percent Tucker Carlson, but ten percent um, um, is still made by legitimate good people who actually want to bring people uh, real information. So if you have time and if you have motivation, you can dig um, those resources. Do people have time and motivation? Mostly no. So they just surrender to the avalanche of propaganda that um, was falling on their heads um, for the last year, but really for the whole uh, for the whole Putin's rule.